Hi, my name is David. Two weeks ago I was diagnosed with prostate cancer and this has now set me on a journey of discovery. Although I have plenty of friends in my life, deep down I know that ultimately this is a journey that I must go on by myself. For that reason I have decided to film my experience. I am David and this is my story so far. I'm a compassionate, um, caring, um, gentle, loving man to all my friends and, and family. I used to also be a totally happy person. In fact, one of my nicknames was Happy. However, another part of me I started to realise is there's a, a part of me that's sad part of me that comes out that's angry every now and again. My GP, since I turned 50, um, has done regular PSA techs. PSA is prostate specific antigen in your blood and that's uh, directly related to your prostate. 12 months ago it started to rise from being 0 and 1 to uh, 2 and then uh, six months ago she called me back in because my PSA had uh, gone up to four and uh, she recommended that uh, I go off and see a specialist. He then did the digital examination and uh, felt a, a lump on the side of my prostate uh, which he straight away said I think you got uh, prostate cancer. To confirm that we'll need to uh, do a biopsy on your prostate. Fear and panic didn't set in until about um, two weeks later. As a matter of fact it was in the shower and I thought ah oh, I'll have some music and the first song that came on was um, a song, I think it's an old gospel song. You've got to walk that lonesome valley. You've got to walk it on your own. And I can feel it now, the, the hitting me of what the options are and that sort of thing, only I've got to decide it. It's an inner journey deep in my um, core, spirit, soul. Uh, that um, I have to walk it myself. I didn't know anything about the journey with uh, the effects it can have on incontinence. I certainly don't want incontinence and uh, to wear a pad. So I'm going to uh, the physio this afternoon to start to learn pelvic exercises and um, I will start doing them every day. Um, that's going to help me in the recovery process. Uh, that's one of my fears is both uh, incontinence and erectile dysfunction. Um, I'm, I'm lucky that I have one woman that uh, will uh, ask me uh, for a bit of sex and I ask her for the same thing uh, and also I enjoy having a wank every now and again. <laughs> Where are we? <laughs> I uh, recently in my journey of telling a few people one chap that uh, I mentioned it to his father died two years ago and it was just before his little boy was born. So um, his father never got to see his little boy. He never got to experience what it's like to have grandchildren. I'm feeling comfortable that I'm probably in a good space uh, to have now the surgery and go from there.
Uh, we're going to the uh, appointment for the surgery that he requires a few days before the surgery. Um, there's all sorts of options you can go down and uh, I looked at them fairly extensively. The pros and cons, the advantages and disadvantages. Uh, so I did a lot of research in those first couple of weeks and uh, I've been to the physio and started to uh, practice and learn pelvic floor exercises. They were pretty difficult to start off with. I thought, oh, how the hell am I going to lift that muscle? We got pelvic floor muscles. How, how do you operate them? How's things? Going pretty good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've, I've had um, some funny feelings along the way. Only uh, I'm pretty confident that you're going to cut out the right bits. Yeah, let's hope. <laughs> yeah. That's, what I'm, that's what I'm here for. And the closer it gets, it seems like, yeah. you know, any anxieties they have and become, you know, more pronounced. So what you're going through is pretty normal. So that's what a catheter yeah. looks like. Yeah. And this much will be going inside you, into through your penis, and this much coming out. So that sits in the bladder, and this bit goes along your urethra and comes out the tip of your penis. Yeah. Also very interesting talking, I've started talking about uh, the whole thing with lots and lots of people. And it's interesting where men, they say, what's a PSA? And when I mentioned I've got prostate cancer, they say, How did, what's it feel like? Mm. When you say, I don't even know. Mm. I don't yeah. feel it. Mm. Uh, a lot of men are stunned, uh, amazed. Initially, I thought, oh, at my age, I don't have to worry too much about the, the sexual side, the getting an erection. Only then when I went back to him for the second uh, appointment, I said, oh, I really want to go for nerve sparing uh, surgery because uh, I had to think about it and I really wanted to have the sexual side. I've got mixed feelings actually. Um, I'm scared, but I'm excited that it's happening. Ah, oh, that's good. Oh, <laughs> here we go. Here we've got uh, David positioned on the table. He's lying, um, you can see his head there. He's got a tube that's um, doing the breathing for him. So here I'm just controlling the robotic arms and as I move my hand, the, uh, the arms move. The main risks or side effects from this sort of surgery relate to what's called continence, control of your bladder afterwards. I'll be in hospital for one or two days and initially he'll have a catheter in, a tube that drains the urine for usually a week, sometimes a bit more, depending on how well the joint heals up. So this is bladder going down and prostate is up here. How are you feeling? Uh, bit, bit dopey. Uh, I've got a burning sensation in the tip of my penis, but that's, uh, that's pretty normal apparently. And I'm as thirsty as hell.
It's now been a week uh, since, since the op. I went in last Monday. Since then, I've uh, had a little bit of difficulty sitting up in bed and uh, the difficulty getting out of bed. Only other than that, I've noticed a difference every day in me feeling better. Progress from here, I'll, I'll start doing a little bit longer walks day by day, just slightly. I'll still be taking it easy. I'm fully aware that uh, I need to be gentle with that. I have a tendency to go like a bull at a gate, so I'm going to have to remind myself all the time that, uh, yeah, be gentle on yourself, David. Hello, David, would you like to come through? Yeah. How are you going? Not too bad. Now, David, we first met before you were going in for your radical prostatectomy surgery. Yeah. And so what I like to do now is follow up and see how everything went. So before, the bladder used to be supported by the prostate, yeah. and the prostate has the urethral tube running through it that used to get compressed and squeezed whenever you had the urge to empty your bladder. But now, without that, you just have to rely on this little area known as the pelvic floor. Just very gently start by relaxing the belly and then focusing on your front passage, gently draw testes up or nuts to guts as I say, pulling up. Try and keep it there as you breathe and we'll see if you can hold it there for about four or five seconds longer. Now I always like to ask a little bit about the uh, erectile function. It's always nice to know a couple of important things. So say your continence is improved in a month and you're feeling like you would like to you know, try some sexual activity again, you need to be prepared that there might be some differences from what it used to be like. So for example, there's no more ejaculate fluid anymore. Yep. Um, there can sometimes be some urine release though. That tends to be a nerve problem. The pelvic floor muscles can help improve that and it usually improves um, in the second year after surgery. This is a vacuum pump. And basically what happens is the penis is placed inside there to try and get um, some vacuum pressure which elongates the penile tissue. And we aim to do that for up to 20 minutes, about five days a week. This is the 10th week from the operation. By gee, the time's gone fast. I'm doing pretty good uh, overall. Uh, I'm back into exercises now. On a fit ball, I engage the pelvic floor and then lift my knees and uh, that sort of thing. What do you think about that pelvic floor activation as you bring yourself back up, okay? So down into a squat, engage through your pelvic floor, stand back up. So today we ran a specialised exercise rehabilitation program for people recovering from uh, prostate cancer treatment. A lot of it is focused around pelvic floor activation, and pelvic floor strength. To get them back to full health and fitness um, as quick as possible, it's going to help um, improve their quality of life and, and help them to overcome um, everything that they're dealing with. For any male that is diagnosed with prostate cancer, I think it's important for them to understand that they're not alone and, and there are plenty of uh, males just like them that will be out there going through the same things. To have that support in your rehabilitation process I think goes a long way to returning you back to, back to full, full health. I've started taking medication to get the blood flow uh, going to the head of the penis so that can start uh, having some effect in repairing the nerve fibres that uh, give you an erection. Emotionally, I'm quite pleased with my progress and when I went back to the surgeon the other day, he indicated that probably in a month I'll be completely dry, which uh, is looking good. <laughs>